One of the things that evangelical Protestants often find disconcerting if they walk into a Catholic church is to see the crucifix and the Stations of the Cross. They say that, well, Jesus has risen. So why are you Catholics displaying his suffering and his death? In our Protestant churches, we only have a cross, for Jesus is no longer on it. He's the risen one. Well, certainly in this time of COVID, and as we remember 9-11, and as we see what's happened in Afghanistan as our troops and those of other nations have withdrawn, we realize that we're not living in the kingdom of God. This is not the world of peace and of love. That sin and suffering are part of the world that we live in. And Jesus didn't come to take away all suffering in this life, but rather he came to be with us in the midst of it. For God will not abandon us. Like the psalmist today who cries out, um, when the cords of death encompassed me and the snares of the netherworld settled upon me, I fell into distress and sorrow, and I called upon the name of the Lord. We too are called out to the Lord who will not abandon us. For we know that Jesus understands what struggle and suffering and pain are about because he's been there. He knows what it is. The prophet Isaiah today speaks about the suffering servant and we know that that's a prophecy of Jesus. As he says, I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. However, like Peter, we want to avoid all suffering and death. You know, Lord, you're risen, so why should we have to suffer? But God knows, knowing what it is to be human, and that's what Jesus does, brings, in a sense, the total of humanity into the God. He knows that without suffering, would we ever learn compassion? Will we break loose from our egocentric tendencies? It's interesting that often the poor and the suffering know how much they need others and need one another. That's why they're often quicker to share their meager resources one with another. And it's the reason why priests and sisters who work in poor nations will do their best never to visit a family during mealtime because they know that that family is going to put food before them first. And that may often mean that one or another of the parents will have nothing to eat. Those who work with the poor and the dispossessed often have a great gift. They learn compassion and our need one for another. They avoid the trap that the letter of James speaks of today, which is to wish another well while doing nothing to change a person's circumstances. It's easy to say, oh, good luck, or why don't you get a job to a person who might already have a job, but it pays too little to live on 
and their education was too minimal to give them much of a chance to get a better job. I was recently talking with a fellow who I know is a hard worker, and he has two jobs. One's a night job, and the other is some four hours of doing some cleaning work uh, after he finishes his first job, and they're both fairly low paying. So he works at least 60 hours every week. Now, some of you may work 60 hours, particularly if you're in law <laughs> or in finance. Uh, but you're making three or four times what this guy is making. You get better health benefits and you have something toward retirement. When Jesus rebukes Peter today, it's not because Peter doesn't want Jesus to suffer. I mean, hopefully we don't want anyone to suffer. Or nor that Peter, like most first century Israelites, thought that the Messiah would be another Davidic king to drive out the Romans. But I think more he rebukes him because he doesn't think about the way that God thinks in what God knows we need to help us to learn compassion and love. Knowing how humans think, God sent his son, Jesus, to enter into the human condition, to embrace all that it is to be human, from the love of his family to suffering and death that we might learn how to love in every situation and to trust that with God we can persevere through anything. To cling to the cross is to cling to the one who loves us. And through that, we can overcome all things, even death itself. So we need to put our trust in Jesus' words. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny self, take up the cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. That's certainly a hard saying. There's no question about that. But if we walk with Jesus, working to live it out. We'll walk, as the psalmist says, before the Lord in the land of the living, the place of eternal life. So yes, let us look at the crucifix and see not so just Jesus' sufferings, but the love that overcomes all suffering and sin in this life and brings us the victory of eternal life. As we sing on Good Friday, behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore him.